Oh, more, more free speech news coming out of Scotland, you know? Yeah, how shocking. Uh, backlash as Glasgow venue faces pressure to cancel show over anti-trans allegations. A comic and two poets have hit back at pressure placed on a Glasgow pub to cancel their show over allegations of transphobia. Uh, Scotland has become a toddler playpen for fragile thugs, according to a performer being targeted by a group calling for a venue to cancel them, as they are wont to do. Basically, if people don't like what you're going to say, they will just try and prevent you from saying it. You know, the whole, uh, if you cut out a man's tongue sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, bloody, get off my screen. Right, uh, sorry, get bloody notifications while I'm trying to work. Uh, Jenny Lindsay, a former BBC Slam champion with her own book, is to be joined by Maggie Gibson, recently listed as the third top favourite poet in Scotland by Scotsman readers, and Elaine Miller, the fringe comic and woman behind a American protest at Holyrood. The show titled Women Word is due to be hosted by Blackfriars Cellar in Glasgow, but the venue is under public pressure to cancel it. I actually know what that is, I think. I think I actually, a long time ago, uh, I was actually at a gig in there. I think it's gone a long time ago, I don't really remember. Uh, it follows the Stand Comedy Club in Edinburgh, scrapping a show featuring Joanna Cherry MP. Uh, due to her gender views, she is a little bit of a black sheep in the SNP, which I've said a few times before. The trio are hitting back against allegations of transphobia from Cabaret Against Hate Speech, the group behind the failed furries protest in Glasgow, and the protest of the feminist film at Edinburgh University. <laughs> yeah. Fun people. Yeah, the, these are these are uh, authoritarian groups that are trying to control the flow of information. Uh, basically, their ideology is damaging and incorrect, and they want to prevent people from pointing that out. They want to be able to just have people believe everything that they say and not have anybody, you know, offer a counter voice, because that's the only way they can actually get followers and bring people onto their side uh, without people being able to challenge them, which is why these authoritarian uh, groups are out there to violate your human rights. And it's allowed and celebrated in the media and stuff like that. And for some reason, these motherfuckers still think they're the good guys, <laughs> somehow. Uh, the activist uh, told Twitter followers, Dear Blackfriars Bar, there is a show going on next month in your basement that is showcasing three performers that are anti-trans, with some being more extreme than the other. Why is this being allowed in your venue? Stand Comedy Club, protect the trans community, do you? Uh, it's been allowed because they are, uh, what is it you guys like to say, they're a private business and they can do what they want. Uh, Miss Lindsay, herself familiar with harassment for her not agreeing with the claim that trans women are women, said that this nonsense has followed me everywhere. She documented her experience within Scotland's poetry world in an article titled Anatomy of a Hounding, Fear and Factionalism in Scottish Poetry. She took to Twitter to say, I have had my work with young people targeted. I have other poets, even supportive ones, terrified of working with me in case the leaders of my hounding target them too. I have had friends cease contact terrified into acquiescence or silence in the face of hounder's demands and that's called the chilling effect basically making everybody too scared to associate with you so you lose all your support so eventually you just twiddle out into nothing you just fade away face down in the gutter penniless no house no job no nothing because that's apparently the punishment that you need for uh, wanting to speak the truth essentially <clears throat> again these people think they're the good guys uh, is it, well, i forget the saying I forgot the saying, it's not the path to hell is paved with good intentions, it's uh, was it, nothing's more dangerous than a person who uh, believes their goals are justified or good or something. I've absolutely butchered that. <laughs> Google it. Uh, it is insanity. The one thing left to me is to self-organise, hire venues to perform, to make a living this way. That's the exact same, same thing that we've had to do. There's loads of comedians that are in the Scottish comedy circuit. Uh, I'm a little bit of a... I'm a little bit of a divisive figure whenever my name is mentioned and stuff like that, but that's fine. See if anybody just wants to believe uh, all the shite. Uh, I don't want to work with them. I don't. Uh, I've no time for idiots. See anyone that just uh, believes everything they're spoon-fed in the media. I don't want to associate with people like that, so if anything, it actually works out uh, a lot in my favour. But that's what we have to do. We hire our own events with people that we know for a fact are on side, uh, that won't cancel us. We announce the, the event, like, usually. We give the general area the event's going to be, and then we announce it, like, the day before, or, like, on the day, and all that, so that everyone knows where they're going. Uh, so, yeah, it's actually... And ever since we started doing that, we've had, like, no fucking problems. 
It's actually so much easier. Uh, it's better, to be honest. Uh, it's taken me some time to feel able to do that, and the last fortnight I have faced discrimination both from venues refusing to allow me to hire them to this cabaret for hating on women, uh, cabaret for hating on women, now attempting to get a venue to cancel myself and two other freelance performers. I've had enough of this. Scotland has allowed itself to become a toddler playpen for these fragile thugs. Now, these people, all they can do really is harass you. Although... I guess for some people, harassment obviously is scary, like, especially for women, you know. And I, I, I can get that, you know. If I was a, if I was a little fragile female and I had some great big man in a dress going, "It's ma'am," like in my face, I'd be a wee bit scared as well. Um, especially when it's pretty much been made socially acceptable for them to assault you. And if you defend yourself, you're the bad person. Yeah, it's a, what a weird world we live in now. Miss Miller, uh, also no stranger to being targeted for her performance, con uh, performance content, having performed a show about biological women's health at last year's Fringe and taking a public stance against the SNP's gender reform uh, reform's impact on women's rights. She said, I am anti a few things. The transgender community is not one of them, but boring, lazy bullies are. The cabaret people won't see this as they blocked me. Yawn, come along, it will be a great night. The show is pegged as an afternoon of celebration with three of Scotland's best women poets and performers with topics expected to centre around women and feminism. And a lot of people say, oh well, shouldn't uh, the public be able to dictate uh, whether or not they can take this business? Yeah, that's fine. Like, if anybody wants to like boycott a place, whatever, that's your money, that's your custom, you know, you can do with it what you want. But see, when you actually try and actively harass people, like if you're trying to block people from going into the venue, which is something I've seen and experienced a few times, then, you know, that's direct interference, you know, that's all over there. In fact, I think it is illegal in some parts if you're actually blocking access to private property that people want to access. Uh, that's actually a crime. But they get away with it because... After all, you're trans. Do whatever you want all the time. <laughs> well, but yeah, uh, obviously, should Blackfires be able to uh, host these women? Absolutely. They're a private company. They can do what they want. Should these women be able to, you know, do their show and read their poetry and stuff like that? Absolutely. That's their protected right of freedom of speech, which means that if that pub wants to host them, uh, the, and that's the, also their freedom of speech, they should 100% be allowed to do that. If people are just wanting to say things about the pub, then whatever, but as soon as they actually start to do direct interference, uh, doing a lot of shady stuff to prevent these people from speaking, well then that is a direct uh, infringement of their human rights. But as we all know, uh, the trans lobby uh, do not give a fuck about anybody else's rights except from theirs. They don't want equal rights, they want privilege. Right, and I, I challenge anybody to come and uh, come and challenge me on that one. See when it gets to a point where you're like you're not allowed to criticize us in any way whatsoever, or if you have one of the best questions to ask them, what do you feel is a valid criticism of the trans community? None of them will be able to answer you. None of them will give you an answer because they don't see any criticism of themselves at all as valid. They see it as hate speech, bigotry. Oh my god, you're literally telling us. Like yeah. Uh, hyperbole is uh, another thing that they use all the time. But yeah, uh, I'll keep a wee eye on this one. Uh, oh shit, there was more to the article. <laughs> but fuck it, it's too late. I have to go home. Bye-bye.